Hi, everybody. It's Joe Chaffee on this uh, Sunday, last day of winter, St. Joseph's Day. Uh, looking like uh, weather conditions here are improving in the east. There isn't too much going on uh, with respect to uh, big storms uh, in the eastern two-thirds of the United States this week. Here's that uh, coastal storm, and I'm going to start with the new NAM model. And just so everybody is clear, the reason why I do that is because now that we're on daylight time, this is the only model that uh, we have the newest version of by the time I'm able, when I'm able to cut these videos. So I'm going to show this first a, a lot over the next number of months because that's the newest thing we have, and uh, I want I want that to be front and center. So we have our coastal system, which turned out to be a big nothing um, from last night, and that's moving away. And we're going to continue to see uh, drier conditions with weather conditions improving. Uh, throughout the, the rest of this Sunday and into Monday. In the meantime, as we uh, look at Monday, we've got some rains coming into the west, into California, uh, especially into northern California, uh, the coastal areas at least, and on up into coastal Oregon, and gradually that spreads inland. Now, in the meantime, here we are for Monday night. There is a cold front with a, another cold air mass coming down out of Canada, and that's going to move through early on Tuesday. <clears throat> NAM's got some showers with it. I don't know how, uh, you know, how, how real that is or whether they'll hold together. Uh, but the bottom line is that this high is going to build down and produce uh, another shot of cold air for probably for Wednesday and Thursday of this week in the east. Meanwhile, the storminess in the west continues to increase as we've got rains uh, by uh, late Tuesday, by, uh, I'm sorry, by uh, midday Tuesday uh, from Southern California all the way up into Washington and Oregon and some snows in the higher terrains up in the northern Rockies. You see there's a little wave that's up and down into Oklahoma. That's going to ride out that cold front after it goes by and, and produce some rain into um, Virginia uh, uh, and North Carolina on Wednesday, early Wednesday. Some of the earlier model runs had that as snow, but apparently uh, it looks like it's going to hold the cold air back. But wouldn't rule it out completely at this point. It might go back to something a little colder in subsequent runs. And then again, here's the big high in the east. Now we're at Wednesday night, and we've got all this action going on in the west. So <clears throat> what's it, what is happening? Well, let's um, go to the GFS from last night, and we'll show you the upper air. And I got a laugh, by the way, because yesterday, right after um, I finished cutting my uh, video, and actually a couple hours later when the European came out after I you know, some uh, just basically said there really weren't any threats uh, for the end of the month. Here comes, here came, here came the one European run that was, I mean, when I tell you completely out of control um, for next weekend, I mean, it actually generated amounts in feet across Pennsylvania and downstate New York. It was, it was just so ridiculous. Um, we had nothing but laughs over it. And of course, the next model run, it all pretty much disappeared, but no matter. This is the world I live in. Okay, so let's look at the upper air. And here we are at Sunday. Here's that coastal uh, cutoff system. I'm going to have to go back one run. The new GFS is just, just starting, so it's only in for six hours. So it becomes a little problematic here. Okay, so there's that system from today that lifts out. And now we have the uh, next cold front as evidenced here by the structure of the jet stream. So you have a ridge in the west. There's this trough in the east bringing down cold air. Trough off the west coast. Ridge in the Atlantic along 40 building up toward Greenland. So uh, you do have a polar flow here that's going to bring down some cold air for the middle part of this week. But notice that nothing stays in position. That ridge pulls out. The trough pulls out. And suddenly... As we go into the end of this week, we're left with a ridge in the east, a ridge out in the Rockies, a trough in the west, and a trough in the middle of the country. So, um, you know, just a very, uh, a, 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 a very um, a milder pattern, certainly, and looking more and more like the kind of things you start to see in the pattern in early spring. And in, as we move into next week, you know, there's some kind of uh, system here. For next weekend and you can see it there now one of the things the european did yesterday was that it did try to bring colder air down uh, at least into the northeast and into the eastern part of the great lakes down to 
maybe the northern mid-atlantic states but the other models didn't quite do that or if they did they didn't do it in the same fashion so i'm not even going to speculate too much on this uh, the bottom line is that we do have a trough uh, what appears to be a trough in the west and not much in the way of any blocking that's developing at least not yet um, but you, you see that ridge comes up into the east for on the, on the gfs at least for uh, Mar march 27th now and lasting into march 29th so this would suggest that we could have a uh, a, a few warm days uh, ahead to when we finish up the month but i don't see anything especially stormy i do see systems coming into the west you see them here let me just ride it back a little bit uh, this is for a, a week from tuesday again there'll be changes in how the model portrays all this but there are systems coming into the northwest and west seems like one after another after another and uh, the gfs you know wants to try again at the end, very end of the period but every day the end of the period becomes one day later where it shows some semblance of a little blocking high trying to build toward greenland who knows again if that's that's real or not but you do have weather systems kind of moving along in spring-like fashion here across the u.s and not a, a really strong polar flow either so to me the pattern just kind of take is taking this sort of spring-like look to it uh, as we um, as we move through the next two weeks, I don't see any big storms on the horizon, uh, but let's look at the GFS surface and see how that plays. And, you know, I'll, maybe I'll use this wider view so we can, you know, take a look so you guys can see, you know, up here in the Canadian Maritimes, as well as uh, in other areas of the country that might be, uh, you might be interested in, and then I'll go a little tighter. Uh, but starting with today okay the storm that's moving off today by the way is going to produce uh there'll be snow developing it looks like over nova scotia and into newfoundland uh, uh late late later this afternoon into monday uh, the low doesn't get especially strong it gets only so far north and then starts to sort of meander a little bit uh you can see the systems in the west aren't exactly powerhouses but they do have ample uh, amounts of moisture this one here uh, for Thursday, looks like a bit more of a powerhouse that that comes toward the Pacific Northwest, although it tends to weaken a bit. Um, but again, going forward, there really isn't too much, you know, you get these systems that come in one after another, but we're not really seeing anything that um, looks problematic. Again, here in the east, by the way, this is what the, um, the GFS... Um, what the European was kind of showing yesterday, and I'll get a little tighter now so you can take a look. Uh, but this is what the European was having yesterday with the system coming out from the south and this cold high sort of pressing down from the north. Uh, it, it Yesterday, the GFS was taking this along the Canadian border. Now it seems to want to take it just south of, of Long Island, east of New Jersey, so it would be cold enough for snow in New England. This would be for next weekend and then out. Uh, but, you know, this is... I don't know. Uh, I, I can't get really worked too, too worked up over this uh, at this stage of the game, even if it were real, even if it is real. There's just way too many variables. Um, and then going forward, it looks like something comes out into the northern Rockies along about day 11, which is March 30th. But here in the east, you know, one of the things you have to watch out for in the east this time of year, by the way, is the presence of backdoor fronts. And what I mean by that is if you take a look here. Uh, even though there's probably a big upper ridge at the bottom part of the atmosphere, there's some shallow cold air, you still have these big highs that want to uh, try and build down. So oftentimes you could have an upper air that looks very warm. And in reality, at the surface, you wind up with, you know, northeast or east winds that uh, create strong onshore flows from usually from the Delmarva Peninsula northeastward into, into New England. So uh, places not that far away from you are in the 60s and 70s. And you're sitting there in the uh, in the 30s and 40s in low clouds and fog and drizzle and, and light rain. So you know, we have to you have to kind of watch out for that possibility um, this time of year. So, you know, other than that, you know, we're going to be, you know, unless there's some kind of surprise snowstorm along the way between now and, and the first part of April. Um, I think we're just going to kind of go into some sort of springtime malaise in a way um weather systems become weaker um we'll probably have periods where we'll get some rain periods where we'll get some warm weather 
It looks like this cold pattern of the last couple of weeks is going to, is changing uh, to something much more transient and maybe warmer than average to finish off the month. By the way, uh, I have to go look at the numbers. I know that we're below average temperature for the month of March. We have had, I believe, in New York City, as measured in Central Park, either 22 or 23 consecutive months of above average temperatures. And this may be the first month in almost two years where we've had <clears throat> below, um, that we wind up below average. And of course, this is as a result of the um, super El Nino that built up last year, uh, that began building up early in the spring and then really just went, you know, gangbusters. Uh, I'm sorry, the year before last, and then it just kind of went gangbusters through the summer and autumn and all through last winter and then started to uh, wind down. And then we had the little La La week La Nina um, early on. Plus, you know, I, I, I'm starting to think that that El Nino was so strong that it's, it that it basically screwed up the atmosphere so badly that it's taking uh, probably it took uh, two years to spend out all that energy. And gradually that energy is being spent out with these you know major storms that have developed and and, and um, the, the um, category four hurricanes that we had over the su over last summer. So maybe the uh, atmosphere is going to trend to some semblance of quite normalcy, whatever that is. And even normalcy is really just lots of swings up and down, up and down. All right. So, folks, look, have a great day. Uh, have a great Sunday um, and a happy St. Joseph's Day. Uh, if you are new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the little red subscribe button on the uh, my YouTube channel page. It's absolutely free, and you'll get notifications of when new new videos come up. Weather posts on meteorologistjoechaffee.com. New York City-based uh, weather posts are on Angry Ben's nycweathernow.com. And, of course, you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast. Uh, they're just 99 cents a month. The app is free for iTunes and, and Androids. Um, 90, uh, for New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. So everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend.